Well, good morning and welcome to Real Life Church. I pray that you had a great Christmas celebration yesterday, and I'm excited that you're here with us this morning as we finish up our series called Christmas Carols. Now this morning, we are gonna look at an all-time children's favorite, Away in a Manger. Maybe it's so popular with the kids because it talks of the birth of Jesus, and it's got that imagery that kids can relate to. You know, the official story behind this song? Well, we really don't know. It appeared actually in a Lutheran Sunday school back in about 1885. But I do know that it's been around for a little over a hundred years and kids love to sing it. So why don't you again picture the imagery of this song as it plays right here before you. The little Lord Jesus. When we sing this song, we tend to focus on the little baby Jesus part. You know, that six pound, eight ounce little baby that's cute, safe, warm, fuzzy, whatever words that you want to use to describe him. But if we do that, we miss out on something that is much, much bigger we miss out on the most powerful aspect of this song, that Jesus is Lord. Lord today, Lord yesterday, and he will always be Lord. And recognizing Jesus as Lord is one of the most significant decisions that you can make as a Christian. Let's pick up in the Christmas story, Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. Now, this is the angel again speaking to the shepherds, saying, Don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in the town of Bethlehem, in the city of David. Did you see it? I bring you good news that a Savior was born, a Messiah was born, the Lord has been born. This angel established that Jesus is Lord, not just some baby, not just any baby, but this baby is the Savior of the world who is Lord. What does this mean for us today? 
How does it affect me today? If Jesus is Lord, what does it mean for my career? What does it mean for my marriage? What does it mean for my dating relationships? What does it mean for school, work? If Jesus is Lord, what does it mean for my life right now, today? So in the New Testament, this word Lord is actually translated the word kurios, okay? Now that word kurios means supreme in authority, controller. It means Lord. Now stay with me for a second because I I know a lot of us, when we hear those words, supreme authority, controller, those are words that cause us some uncomfortableness you because we want to be in supreme control we want to be the one that calls the shots in our life and if jesus wants to be lord and you want to be lord that is going to set up a serious conflict why should i make jesus my lord why should he be the controller why should he be in supreme control of me today And the ultimate answer comes down to a four-letter word called love. See, the number one way that you show love for Jesus is by your obedience. And when I surrender control of my life, my entire life to God, I allow him to be Lord, then he blesses us to the fullest. And the more I surrender, the more I'm obedient the deeper my connection with him is. So I want to spend our time this morning talking about lordship. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord, there's that word, supreme authority, controller. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. And it goes on, it says, for believing with your heart, you are made right with God. And by openly declaring your faith, you are saved. Did you see it right there in that verse? That you have to openly declare that Jesus is Lord. So there are two things in this verse. First of all, if you want Jesus to be your Savior, if you want him to forgive you of your sin, then you have to be willing to make him Lord. See, the first part's easy. We all want Jesus to be our Savior, to forgive us of our sins, past, present, and future. It's that whole lordship thing, that controller, supreme in authority. That's the part that we wrestle with. And let me say this, okay? If you don't want him to be Lord, then he can't be your Savior. See, the idea that you can embrace Jesus as Savior while rejecting him as leader of your life is a dangerous delusion. That's trying to bargain with God. God, I want your salvation, but I'm not going to do or I'm not going to obey and I'm not going to let your presence affect me in any way. See, you can't accept the free gift of salvation and think it doesn't impact your life at all or the way that you live your life. And you you can't play games with God. You can't just say, I'll take the salvation part, but I'm I'm gonna live life the way I want to. And if you do think that way, you have missed completely the point of salvation. Salvation always leads to a changed life. Salvation doesn't come without recognizing the fact that Jesus is Lord. You see that gift of salvation that you receive from God? It may not have cost you anything, okay? But it cost God everything. It cost him his son, and he loved us so much that he sent him to sacrifice himself for you. So our reasonable response, okay, is to give our life back to God, surrendered, allowing Jesus to be Lord. Now, the Apostle Paul, he writes about this in Ephesians chapter 2. Look what he says. He says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for that, all right? It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for those good things that we have done so that no one can boast about it. Have you allowed Jesus to be your Lord? Has he changed the way you live your life? 
If there's no change in the way you're living life, then you're missing something. Maybe you're missing his lordship. And if you're missing his lordship, you're missing his salvation. So in order for you to determine whether you're fully surrendered, you have to ask yourself, have you accepted God's gift of salvation? Okay? And the second question I have for you, and this is the hard one, have I submitted every area of my life to Jesus? I'm going to take you to a Bible verse that's kind of pointed. It comes from Luke chapter 6, verse 46. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, so why do you call me Lord, Lord? Let me help you with that. Why do you call me supreme in authority? Why do you call me controller when you don't do what I say? Jesus said, don't be a fake. I mean, don't live your life one way where you're in control and then call him Lord. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty heavy verse right there. It's a, it's a very convicting verse. Unfortunately, we do that in a lot of areas of our life. We say, you know what, I know what God's word says, or I know what Jesus said, or what he instructed, or what he taught, but I'm going to do my own thing. We do that with our family. We do it in relationships. We do it with our finances. We do it, you know, in all different types of areas of our life. And we got to be really careful about that. Because what we're really saying is that my way is better than his way. And we don't want to do that. That gets us, again, into a very dangerous area of who's really in control. Proverbs 3 comes back into it again. We just looked at this a few weeks ago. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you what path to go on. That's important for us. What area in your life do you need to submit control to? What you have to do, and this is what this point is all about, you have to submit your will unto his will. See, whether you treat Jesus as Lord today or whether I treat Jesus as Lord today doesn't change the fact that the angel said he is the Lord. He is supreme in authority. He is controller. The question is, is will I submit to that? Will I allow him to be who he says he is? Will I take up my cross? Will I follow him every day? And that's a tough one, okay? Because we all have areas that, it's, that we struggle with, all have areas that it's difficult to submit ourselves to his leadership. And it's natural, it's natural not to want to follow someone else's authority. But in this case, God has the very best plans, the very best purpose for your life, and that's why he asks to be your Lord. Is Jesus your Lord? Have you submitted to his Lordship? And have you given up your will for his will? And in fact, um, why don't we just pray? God, thanks for our time together. Lord, uh, what a powerful message this morning. What a challenging message, Lord. Um, even as I was sitting at my desk writing this, how convicting it was in my own life that there are areas in my life where you're not Lord, that I have not submitted my will for your will. And Lord, I know um, that's true of every single one of us that's listening today. But Lord, help us not to be content by doing and going and doing the same thing over and over and over. Help us to align our will and our lives with the way that would please you and honor you. God, again, thanks for our time together. I pray your blessings over those who are listening, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want to invite you back next week on January 2nd, 2022. I don't know about you, but I will be kind of happy to see 2021 be in the rearview mirror. Looking forward to whatever God wants to do in 2022. We're starting a brand new teaching series called Now What? All right, you don't want to miss it. What should I be doing as a Christian with my life? We're going to answer that in the next four sessions here at Real Life Church. God bless you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.